What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Pasquarell talking about Social Security reform and a Social Security increase. Now, he's going to be talking about the Social Security 2100 Act. I told you guys I'm going to do a series of videos where we look at some of these different lawmakers and see what they say about Social Security reform and Social Security increase. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all by clicking all you get notified anytime we post a video we do daily videos here so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all you should be getting updated every day and just a reminder thank you for your support i really appreciate it and please consider joining our membership you'll get customized emojis as well as badges just hit the join button below okay so we're going to go ahead and get started we're going to play representative pasquarell and you've probably seen him on the channel before because i have shown some videos uh, of him talking about a social security increase and so we're going to go ahead and play this here we go representative pasquarell I want to thank Mr. Larson for putting his work and soul on the line for the last several years. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on behalf of the more than 124,000 constituents in the 9th District of North Jersey who rely on Social Security each and every month. Social Security is one of America's greatest success stories. After nearly 90 years, it still stands as a monument to de decency, dignity, and the birthright of hardworking Americans. Yet, throughout its storied history, it's been under attack. Going back to 1935, it has been the subject of attacks and lies from day one. The study committee just referred to which represents three-quarters of the House Republicans, proposed slashing Social Security benefits by $718 billion. If I was sitting home right now, I'd be saying, well, does that mean me? Does that mean my benefits that I've paid into? They're going to vote now and take it away? It's the only thing I live on. Republican leadership wants to create a so-called fiscal commission in our government funding bill. That is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Without aggressive action, Social Security lurches toward insolvency. Congress has a sacred responsibility to fight for its future. That is why I'm standing with Representative Larson on a Social Security 2100 Act to assure the long-term strength and the solvency of Social Security. And I will keep standing as long as we have to fight. We're not going home. The Social Security 2100 Act provides paid-for benefit enhancements while not raising taxes on middle-class families. It's a no-brainer. Our bill ends the painful five-month disability waiting period. Imagine that. It would ensure Americans suffering with permanent disorders like Huntington's disease get the help they need without red tape or delay. The bill eliminates the windfall elimination provision so that firefighters and police and teachers and others get the full benefits that they have earned. With the Social Security 2100 Act, we are fighting for our seniors who have worked their entire lives and rely on Social Security to make ends meet. And I remember the first election, congressional election I ran in, Mr. Speaker, in the year 1996, which wasn't yesterday. I remember I walked into the Hall of Seniors in the spring of that year, before the election actually was on, and I knew everything about, I thought, Social Security, but I never expected to get the first question about Social Security. And I was asked, what are you going to do about Social Security? And one of our seniors asked that question in 1996. And here we are, 28 years later. What do you know? I will not vote for a convenient increase in the age requirement. They want you to work and drop dead. 
so that you collect under the ground, I guess. You won't be above ground. I will not vote for cuts to Social Security in order to pay for it. And we are fighting for working families. We must get this done for the American people. There's no excuses. If you're watching, call in. Let us know what you think. This is your money, our money. Thank you, and I yield back. Okay, so that was Representative Pascarell talking about Social Security reform. And you, it was interesting. He was talking about back in 1996, he was asked that question, what are you going to do about Social Security reform? And guess what? We're looking at 28 years later, and we're still asking those same questions. So obviously, we're well past due. Something needs to be done, and he's talking about that. And one of the most interesting things I think he said in this, this clip was he was talking about the fact back in 1996, he was asked the question of, what are you going to do about Social Security? How are you going to reform Social Security? And 28 years later, we're still having this discussion about what are you going to do about Social Security? So the time is long overdue. You do have lawmakers that support a reform and an increase for Social Security benefits. We need to focus on these lawmakers. We need to make sure we get more lawmakers like them in place. We're in an election year. This is an opportunity for us to vote the right people in office. And that's the main reason why I like showing you guys these clips, because you're seeing lawmakers that support that increase, that support reform, and that want to move forward with reform. But then you do have lawmakers that don't want to do anything at all. They don't want to reform Social Security, and some of them want to make cuts to Social Security. He talked about raising the full retirement age and the fact that he doesn't support that. But guess what? You have lawmakers that support that. That Republican study committee that he talked about in the beginning, they support raising the full retirement age to 69. That would mean, like he said, they want you to work until you die. And it's unfortunate, but some lawmakers look at Social Security and think that we don't need it. It shouldn't be there. We should privatize it or we should get rid of it as a whole. So you've contributed your whole life working, paying into that payroll contribution, and they want to take that away from you. And I'm not being dramatic here. This is what some of these lawmakers are saying. They want to take it away from you. So if you paid 30 years into... Uh, Social Security contributed 30 years or contributed 40 years or contributed 20 years. They want to make it so those benefits are not going to allow you to retire with dignity, allow you to retire with just being comfortable. That's all we want. When you get to the point where you retire, you want to be comfortable. You want to be able to do some of those things that you've dreamed about your whole life. And it's unfortunate, but a lot of people are starting to realize that their 401k is not enough money for them to retire comfortably, and then they start looking at Social Security. Okay, well, how much am I going to receive in Social Security? Surely Social Security should provide me enough to allow me to live with dignity, and they're finding out the harsh reality that Social Security is not going to be enough. And when we look at 11 years down the road, when the trust fund is depleted, if Congress doesn't act, that's going to be another 23% cut. So the number that you're looking at today when it comes to Social Security benefits could be reduced by 23%. And then that 401k, the retirement plan that you've been contributing to your whole life as well, it's not going to be enough. And so we really need to, to look at some of the politicians out there right now that want to dismantle Social Security and get them out of office. It's simple as that. Because they do not have our best interests in mind. And you have over 90% of the US population, working population, they're contributing to Social Security. And so if you have 90% of the people contributing to Social Security, the FICA contribution, and you have lawmakers out there that do not want to expand Social Security, do not want to reform Social Security, guess what? They are not representing you. They're doing the opposite of representing you if you wanna look at it that way. Their job is to represent. They're not doing that. They don't need to be in office. So I want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one.